Thanks, Carol. And uh, at the outset, could say it's a great pleasure to be here. Thanks, Joe, for the invitation and opportunity to be part of McGill 2015. As soon as we get the Peter, the NSS, NSS final. final. Yeah. As soon as we get the technology working, we get, that's it. There you go, Peter. Thanks. Okay, as I said, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, I should say at the outset that uh, I'm an architect uh, by profession and a manager by transition over the past about 15 years at this stage, which means I know nothing about planning. I know less about uh, the National Spatial Strategy than either of the previous speakers. Uh, so I'm very glad that I'm coming in at the end. And just also by way of introduction, we had a very pleasant conversation with Connor last night. Uh, I thought things had morphed in some way. We agreed on almost everything. I'm glad to see that na normal services resumed, and we're, and we're going to discuss one or two of the points that he made on the way through this presentation. Firstly, uh, as I said, the National Spatial Strategy, no less about than the, either of the two previous speakers, so we'll keep it short on that front. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about what... As a practitioner uh, on the coal face, so to speak, uh, we w might like to see in a future spatial framework, and I'd like to speak about the role of local government uh, and what it has to do as the deliverer of these policies. And I do agree with both of the previous speakers. We are great for writing policies. Uh, we are much weaker in terms of implementing them or even the will to implement them. It's almost like once you write the plan, it's done, it's great, it's a volume, it's a bestseller, let it up there uh, and forget about it. Our view, uh, National Spatial Strategy, came out of the National Development Plan 2000-2006. Uh, it was an effort in some way to put some shape around the uh, exuberance of the Celtic Tiger boom, which some in the room may remember. Uh, seems like uh, generations and eons ago. Uh, it had the holy grail of regional balance, uh, whatever that actually really means, and we'll talk a bit maybe on that. And it was an effort to be holistic. It was the first effort that I remember uh, to include both employment and population distribution in the same policy document, uh, weak as it was. Uh, modelled on a study that was done for the uh, border Midlands and West region by Fitzpatrick Associates back in 1999. Their analysis was that all of the growth engines were south of the Galway-Dublin line. Uh, they proposed a network, national network would be extended and that the areas in between those growth centres would retain their rural character. Uh, the objectives outlined already was a 20-year framework. Uh, it was laudatory in that it sought to optimise national development. Uh, it sought to coordinate investment across both the public and the private sectors, investment in terms of money and in terms of effort, uh, and it was at least a step in trying to develop a strategic planning system. Policy and the strategy was around uh, gateways as key economic drivers, hubs that you know as almost the, 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 the SOP to the rural drivers, uh, the rural areas, uh, strongly connected by transportation uh, infrastructure and communications and energy networks. Uh, the two big ideas that came out of it, the Atlantic Corridor, we'll come back to a little later, and the gateways and hubs, some of which worked and some of which uh, really didn't at all. If you take Mayo, which is the place that I know best, uh, the alignment of Ballina and Castlebar was artificial in the extreme. They're 25 miles apart. They barely speak the same language. They have no connection whatsoever. Um, it would have been much more realistic to have aligned Castlebar and Westport, who are uh, very closely uh, working together and are about to become the economic engine with a small e uh, of, of Mayo. So issues hit stormy water straight from the start, as Rob said. There are questions about its status. Uh, it never had legislative backing. Uh, it was accused of being too urban-centric in its view. Uh, political support, I think the decentralization program uh, pretty clearly indicated that it didn't have universal political support, to put it uh, at its best. Uh, and the crisis of 2008 was really the final kind of coffin, uh, nail in the coffin. Outcomes effects, did it have any? Well, if you look at the growth of the towns, this was supposed to balance growth around the regions and in the gates and hubways. Uh, the results in the Midlands are interesting. Uh, 20s uh, heading up towards 30% growth in population. Uh, spotty all over the rest of the county, country. Uh, if you look at a regional basis, again, the Midlands fares better than uh, the Dublin benchmark, uh, spotty around the rest of the country. But arguably, that's not an outcome of the National Spatial Strategy. It's just an outcome of the natural growth and commuting patterns out of the greater Dublin area. 
positives. Um, at least we started to debate the challenge of strategic development on the island and what balanced regional development means, the need for it, uh, whether it is inevitable that urbanisation will continue uh, unregulated on the East Coast, uh, and whether it's inevitable that population will move in that direction, whether it's in anyone's interest that uh, our urban economic drivers are allowed to develop laissez-faire uh, to the point where they become congested and ineffective and go into a spiral of decline uh, while others pick up the load. That debate at least started. Uh, there was an element uh, of moving towards a hierarchical system of planning. There was some element of alignment, not a great deal, but some. Uh, and there was the question of balance with the Atlantic Corridor, which I think is possibly one of the ideas that may survive the first iteration of the National Spatial Strategy. For the future, what would we like to see? Well, from a local government seat, um, again, not an expert in planning, but a practitioner in what the planning system gives us in terms of tools and what we have to deliver with it. I'd like to see an SS, an SS of the future, which is value-based, which incorporates a vision that we can all buy into and which empowers those who have to deliver it at the coalface to actually go and deliver it. I'd like to see a national framework, in other words, with the potential, the tools for local delivery. And if you look at models out there of what we perhaps could base it on, uh, the Scottish model, the National Planning Framework of Scotland, which is, I think, a year old at this stage, is one that we certainly would advocate looking at. The title is not the National Planning, planning Framework. The title of the document is Ambition, Opportunity and Place. And that takes us out of a whole lot of debates about regional development. It fits into a coherent structure. It goes all the way from national policies down to uh, local delivery. And the planning outcomes that are desired are very clearly articulated. And they're articulated in terms of place, and that's one thing that architects, I think, can relate to. Uh, and I think it's really important. That's one of the gifts that perhaps uh, that the profession can bring to the debate, one of the strengths. It talks about four kinds of place. It talks about places that are successful and sustainable, places that are low carbon, places that are natural and resilient, and places that are connected. When you start to talk in those terms, I certainly can relate to it. So in the future, I think we need to refocus. I'll talk about that in a second. We need to rebalance, and that's not to be anti-Dublin. I actually like Dublin, love spending time in Dublin, like getting out of Dublin too. It's not anti-Dublin. It's about balancing the potential of other places so that Dublin continues to develop in a way that makes sense for Dublin, for the island, and doesn't become a congested, overworked, over, uh, rely, or a place that we're over-reliant on as an economic engine, because that's no one's interest either. And the framework, the new document, new policy, has got to re-energize our work in that whole area. I would suggest that we need to refocus, that's where we start to disagree with uh, Connor. Uh, traditional focus is that way, east, to the Pale, to the UK and to Europe. The bulk of our attention is in that direction. And I think there is considerable potential for looking to the west, to the marine, to the US and to Canada. I'll explain that in a second. There is a global emerging opportunity with the opening up of the Northwest Passage. In fact, the Scottish Spatial Strategy has uh, an objective to become the service point for what is an emerging uh, major trade route. We're closer to it. We're in the Eurozone, and we speak English. We should be in that space too. We have far stronger connections to the US and Canada than, than, Canada than we are currently utilizing. There's an enormous amount of potential there. So the balance of focus on the West, I think, needs to be looked at. Secondly, in terms of our maritime wealth, 10% of the island is above water. 10% of Ireland is above water. There's 90% of it out there that no one really thinks about, that we've turned our back on, and it's got enormous potential. That's got to be part of our planning as well. We've got this enormous maritime energy resource. Best energy resource closest to the most viable market is of our west coast potential. Put all of that together 
and you talk about the key challenges, and key challenges, as I would see them, are regional balance for the benefit of all of those places. We've got to deal with congestion. It's in no one's interest that Galway is in a place where it takes you an hour to get across the sea at this stage, uh, and Dublin doesn't need to go there either. And we have an issue with rural towns and villages, and we've got to face up to that and deal with it in some shape or form. So I think we're looking at a network. The three elements that we would suggest go into the network for a start, the Atlantic Corridor and the finalising of that. The Wild Atlantic Way that uh, Connor spoke of uh, is one of the great revelations of the past couple of years, and you put the marine domain with that, you've got something that it does make sense to balance the uh, focus of the policy uh, more to the west and away from the traditional anti-Dublin rhetoric. Future of local government, um, I strongly believe that the definition of local government, and there are many uh, definitions of what we do. But there's a belief in, in certain quarters that what we do is really simple. We make better places and we make better communities. And I subscribe to that. So I want to tell in the last couple of minutes the Mayo story, not because I think it's the best way of doing things, but it is the way that I know best because this is where we work and that's where we've been working for the last 20 years. So you know where it is. Our mission, our vision for County Mayo is encapsulated in four words. It's in a county that's sustainable, inclusive, prosperous and proud. Sustainable in the sense that we can continue to do what we need to do. Inclusive in the sense that we make it possible for everyone to contribute to the development of the county. Prosperous in the sense of having the resources to look after the people that we need to look after. Uh, and proud we needn't dwell on. So our role is about making place. It's about making community. It's also at the moment critically about enterprise and investment and jobs. And it's about collaboration, both inside and outside the county. The story of the county is a story of place, heritage, people. Heritage going back 5,000 years. Sad memories of the past century and a half, mainly around the trauma of the famine, what happened and where it has dispersed people to. Uh, very resilient, independent communities out there. This is one of the ones on the north coast uh, near Politomus. The Mayo that we're trying to build today, and we're trying to get away from the Mayo God help us, both the mentality and the phraseology and the perception, which isn't all the fault of Mayo people. Some is, some is not. The Mayo that we're trying to communicate today is a Mayo that's vibrant, creative, industrious, and can do. On the surface, it's 5,500 square kilometres, and it's 130,000 people. Beyond that, it's 40 times the land mass because the red line is the bit of the continental shelf that we're going to take with us when we declare independence at some stage in the, in the not-too-distant future. And believe me, there's enough oil, gas, and energy out there to keep us going, whatever about the rest of you. <laughs> and equally... Uh, Connor talks about 40% of the population leave, living on the East Coast, living in Leinster. That's poss possibly narrowly statistically true. But it excludes a whole raft of people who are connected to this island, may not be subject to our spatial planning laws, but they're certainly part of what we should be thinking about and what we need to be doing, and we are. And in the case of Mayo, we reckon that 5% of the diaspora is conservatively uh, has Mayo DNA. That's three and a half million people out there. Uh, and they're, they're a force to be reckoned with when you get going. As a county, very good at lots of things. The football will wait and see. We live in hope. <laughs> we do hold the titles of the best uh, place to live uh, in Ireland and the best place to go wild in Ireland. And Simon Wall, my colleague from Westport, will talk more to that later uh, this afternoon. And we're very proud of those. And we trade on them. We're also building the tourism, uh, I hate the word product, we're building the tourism industry um, and the tourism, tourism awareness in the Greenway is one of the great success stories. We're placing Mayo as the adventure capital and on the Wild Atlantic Way we're working with Falch Ireland uh, and the other counties up and down the coast. We've developed two discovery points, this one on Inish Turk around the diaspora uh, and this one at Don Patrick Head and we're placing, trying to place Mayo as the heartbeat of the Wild Atlantic Way. 
terms of enterprise and creativity. We have over 3,000 businesses, some of which there is a perception that we're you know, a rural county out on the west somewhere. People do know about the World Atlantic Way. They may not know about the uh, enterprise and creativity. We've got some of the biggest multinationals uh, on the planet located there. The largest Coca-Cola plant in the world is in Balaná. And not that anyone in the room would know, but uh, every molecule of legal Botox on the planet comes out of Westport where they are just finishing a 350 million investment, which was won in the face of very stiff uh, international competition, including Singapore. So it's not Ireland or Singapore all the time. Sometimes it's Westport or Singapore. In this case, Westport won. Future as we see it is about connectivity and collaboration. Uh, and it's for that reason we've put so much energy in the last four years into the transatlantic fiber optic cable project, which was originally started by Emerald Networks. Uh, and is now being taken on by uh, Aquacons. And that cable comes ashore uh, in middle of August this year. It's the first cable in 20 years to be laid across the Atlantic. It doubles capacity on the Atlantic, and it's the first connection direct from the U.S. into Ireland. It comes through Mayo. opens up a lot of potential. A lot of potential in the area of energy, which we won't dwell on. But in terms of collaboration, we see ourselves as being part of a region where there is a local authority to facilitate internal collaboration within the county, external collaboration uh, in our region, and as a sub-national area as well, as part of the Atlantic Corridor. Future is also about, in our view, confidence and communication. It's for that reason that we put so much effort into enterprise and investment and rebranding the county with three succinct calls to action under the banner of Mayo.ie, which are visit, connect, and invest. Now, that future that we talked about, the vision, sustainable, inclusive, prosperous, proud. We think a proper approach to planning framework for this country could help us to build that county and other places around the country. And we in local government would very much like to be part of the debate to help build the national framework that helps us build that future.